welcome to Let the Quran Speak. In popular culture, angels are often depicted as winged creatures with halos and harps, looking kind of half human and half supernatural. Now, how are angels depicted within the religious traditions? We discuss that with Dr. Shabir. Dr. Shabir Ali, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on, Safiya. Are angels actually the way we see them in popular culture, Dr. Shabir? Well, obviously, uh, uh, angels in, in, all, in, in all of the world's religions are uh, unseen creatures, uh, and, and so any depiction of them in popular culture is really our idealization of uh, what an angel uh, uh, would look like. Uh, so mm -hmm. often in popular culture, angels are represented uh, as uh, uh, the most beautiful of human beings, and um, what distinguishes them as angels are uh, often the wings that uh, uh, they bear in, in many traditional um, uh, uh, forms of thinking, and uh, sometimes uh, with, uh, with other identifiers that we're dealing here with uh, holy uh, or otherworldly creatures. Mm -hmm. Often with halos on their head, I assume. Exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Shabir, it seems like uh, in the Abrahamic religions, angels are really um, a big thing. You find that you find in the scriptures they're mentioned quite a bit. Can you tell me how angels are depicted? Uh, yes, um, angels. Uh, first of all, in the in the Bible, we have uh, many uh, accounts of angels and their, their visitation to Earth. Uh, we are told in the Book of Genesis that uh, uh, three angels came uh, and visited Abraham. Uh, we see in uh, also in the Old Testament that uh, in the Book of Daniel uh, there is a mention of uh, Michael, one of the angels, and also Gabriel, who uh, speaks to Daniel and gives him the interpretation of his uh, vision in Daniel uh, 7. Um, in the New Testament, uh, we have uh, mentions of uh, angels. Uh, an angel comes to announce the birth of Jesus. Um, and uh, the angel Gabriel specifically speaks to Mary to give her the Annunciation. Angels uh, visit uh, the shepherds as they were out watching their flocks by night to let them know about the birth of uh, Jesus. Uh, also in the Gospel, we have an angel coming and uh, uh, rolling away the stone uh, from the mouth of the cave in which Jesus is said to have been buried. And uh, then the angel sat upon it. Uh, angels uh, continued to visit the early Christians. Uh, Peter was put in prison and uh, an angel uh, made it possible for Peter to get out of prison and, and so on. So um, mm -hmm. we have a lot of uh, references to angels uh, in, in the Old and the New Testaments. Mm -hmm. One thing that struck me is that within Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, uh, the treatment of angels is very similar. So you see them doing similar things. They have similar roles and similar responsibilities um, within these traditions. Yes, uh, and in fact, um, when we come to speak about the Quran, we'll have uh, perhaps a little bit more to say about that. But just to trace the continuation uh, of these uh, beliefs, uh, academics would place uh, these beliefs within a tradition that goes back all the way to Zoroaster. So in the Zoroastrian uh, tradition, there is also uh, a mention of angels. Uh, so there is also a belief that uh, each person has a guardian angel. And and um, that belief in angels or angelic beings uh, seems to have uh, survived in uh, Judaism, Christianity, and also in Islam, uh, as interpreted by academic scholars. Mm -hmm. so, so Muslims also have this concept of guardian angels then? Uh, yes, uh, in, in the Quran there is a verse in which uh, it says, so, "Ayyadahum bi ruhim min." God is going to help the believers with a spirit from Him. And uh, in another verse, in the thirteenth chapter, in the eleventh verse, that is, uh, uh, the the Quran says uh, that uh, there are uh, some who guard uh, these uh, uh, human individuals, and uh, this is interpreted uh, by Muslim commentators to mean that uh, each person person has uh, uh, two angels uh, who are recording uh, his or her deeds, uh, but uh, each person also has uh, two angels, uh, one in the front and one in the, in, in the rear of the person, um, uh, guarding this person from uh, evils and, and disasters uh, that one might ordinarily have faced on the way. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dr. Spear, what is the responsibility of these angels? Are they sort of intermediaries between God and human beings? Uh, in, in the Islamic conception, uh, the angels do not have uh, any, any power to intercede. No one can intercede, whether angel or prophet or holy person, except by, by the will and permission of God. So some mm -hmm. might be honored by, giving the given the, by being given the chance to intercede. So in that sense, so we, we see that the angels uh, take the prayers of the believers up to God, uh, but it is God who uh, um, obviously will accept or reject uh, the prayer prayers, but uh, mm -hmm. the angels uh, come and uh, the uh, the Quran says uh, regarding the night of destiny, uh, the angels and uh, the spirit descend on that night. Uh, it is a Muslim belief that the angels come and that they are close to human beings. In fact, uh, uh, one na a traditional narrative even says that the angels uh, come and shake hands with the, with the believers. And there is a narrative that says that the Prophet peace be upon him said to one of his companions that if you were to remain in the state in which you are uh, when you are with me, then the angels will come and uh, greet you in your beds. Uh, so the, the angels are around, according to Muslim belief. We do not see them, and uh, they uh, do not have any effect on uh, the material objects around us, uh, but uh, they inhabit a spiritual world, which is uh, a separate dimension uh, from the physical dimension that we inhabit. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. uh, they are watching over us, they record our deeds, and uh, even the words that we utter, and uh, these are all presented uh, before God. Mm -hmm. Do we know, Dr. Spear, why angels were created? Because, for example, God has said why he created human beings, but what is the reason why God created angels? Well, God has created uh, um, many different types of creatures, and uh, uh, it's uh, hard for us to answer specifically about each and every creature, like why did God create this one and, and that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general... But usually there's uh, a purpose, right? There's a purpose to creating yes. human beings. Uh, and, and this mm -hmm. much we can affirm. Uh, and Muslim philosophers have said that God uh, does not do anything without a purpose and without a good reason. And mm -hmm. uh, in general, we can say that if there is some good to be achieved, Achieved, then um, uh, God would, would do that. So if uh, angels, being the good creatures that they are, um, uh, by creating them, God would achieve some good purposes, then naturally God creates them. Uh, a, a, I mean, a question does arise if God creates some evil creature, like why does God create this evil? Uh, but in the case of angels, because they're perceived as being good creatures in the Islamic tradition, uh, there's hardly any reason to get more specific and ask, why did God uh, create them or for what purpose? If one were to say, that, well, these... Do you think that they were created for the purpose of uh, being examples of, uh, let's say, perfect obedience? That could be one of the benefits of creating angels, but was that the ultimate purpose? Uh, I have to confess my ignorance at this point and say, okay. I, I don't know what, why mm -hmm. God would have created angels. But we can see many mm -hmm. good uh, benefits that come out of the fact that God created angels. And yes, this is one of the benefits that we can uh, aspire uh, to a sort of ideal which is represented in the angels. The Quran says that the angels do not cease to worship God, but they are there continuously in, in the service of God. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, tell me about other religious traditions, because we focus a lot on the Abrahamic religions. What about other religions? What do they say about angels? Yeah, there is scant mention, Sophia, in the other religions of angels, uh, per se, with that title. Uh, this particular title uh, comes from the Hebrew um, word, uh, uh, which means to send. So an angel is start, uh, thought to be a, a messenger, a malach. And uh, so malachi is my messenger, one of the Old Testament books. The last of them in the Protestant Bible is actually uh, entitled Malachi. Uh, English speakers often pronounce it as Malachi, Malachi, uh, but Malachi in the in the Hebrew, and that uh, translates into the Old Latin Angelos, which uh, came uh, to uh, from the from the Greek 
as well, which has the same meaning. So angel in, in English basically comes from that root, which means that one who is sent. And in the Quran, angels uh, have that uh, meaning and connotation. They are messengers from God, especially the angel Gabriel, who brings down a message uh, to God. So other religious traditions uh, do have concepts of good and bad spirits, and their good spirits would correspond to the Muslim view of angels, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, they do not call them by that by that term. For, so for example, in the Shinto tradition, there is mention of the kami, which are spirits, and spirits are said to be imbuing everything. Uh, in uh, speaking more clearly about angels, uh, we have uh, in uh, one uh, tradition that emerged out of uh, Hinduism, uh, the idea that angels are like good human beings who have reached that mm -hmm. uh, sort of stage of perfection. In the Baha'i faith, we see something similar as well. In the Sikh religion, there is mention of angels, but some take this to be a metaphorical uh, reference. Uh, for example, there is a reference to angels who are messengers of death, uh, for example, and uh, the name Yam is used as the angel of death. Uh, but uh, this did not develop into a full-blown angelology in uh, the Sikh religion, as it has been in the um, religions of Judaism and, uh, and Christianity, and uh, far less so in, in the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing those interesting insights on uh, angels within the religious traditions, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. You're welcome.